Hi there, my name is Will and welcome back to a deep dive of workflow components. Today, I'm gonna to walk you through variables and how you can use those inside of your flows. Variables are a key value pair that you can reuse across various tasks. You can think of these a bit like a constant value that you might use in a traditional programming language. Now, the main thing that makes variables different to inputs is variables do not change once your flow has started its execution. Whereas with an input, you're able to pass a new value at execution. So maybe when you're doing a manual execution or when you're running it via the API, you can pass a new input in to get a different outcome. Now with variables, this is not the case. Variables will not change. And so this is really useful if you've got data that you wanna make sure is consistent and doesn't change unexpectedly. Variables are stored at the namespace level, which means you can reuse them between multiple tasks. Great for avoiding any duplication. Let's jump into an example of how you might configure a variable and when you might wanna use one. Here, I've jumped into Kestra and I can add my variable at the top of the screen by typing variables similar to what I would do with an input, and then I can just sign my key value pair. So for example, here, I'm able to add a new variable by adding variables, and then I can simply add a key value pair. I can add as many of these as I like as well. Just keep adding them to the list. And then once I've done that, I can simply add them to any task that has a dynamic property by using the following syntax. And as you can see here, by doing vars dot, I get the option to select my variables. I'm gonna put message in here. And when I press save and then press execute, we will then see that appear here in our logs. Really simple to use and really, really helpful. Now let's have a look at an example where variables is really helpful. In this example, I want to make a request and I've got a URL here. Now this URL isn't going to change. So I can make this a variable to make it one easy to identify what it is, but also allow me to reuse it if I want to make requests maybe in different tasks or later on in this task. So just like we did before, I can head over and add a variables property and then I can just add HTTP URL and then I can just add our URL as we would expect here. And then again, I can just add that in by using the variable here. When I press save, I can execute this and we'll see that it is able to successfully get the data. And you can see it returns 200, which means our URL was valid. So this is really helpful if you wanna be able to reuse the same URL in multiple places without having to then update it in multiple places. So it just simplifies development and streamlines it for you. Hopefully you found that useful. Stay tuned for more workflow component videos where we're gonna be going into more detail on how you can build the most powerful flows.